I'm going to deal with a problem with a Retina Reflex 4. This isn't the one with the problem. The camera with the problem is far, far away. And its problem is that the capping plate, visible here, doesn't swing all the way up out of the way like that. But it sits down slightly. So its rest position is something like that. Just cutting off the very top of the shutter or the visible part of the shutter. Would that affect the image on the film? Quite possibly not. It would depend on the aperture of the lens and the lens that was fitted at the time. But it's a nuisance. And since the camera is far, far away and I don't want to enrich the post offices of the world any more than I have to, I've been thinking about how I might, what the cause of the problem may be and what the answer might be. So, this is a reanimated corpse of a reflex for from my parts boxes and it sort of works after a fashion and it works well enough for my purposes. What I'm going to do is induce the fault in this camera and then see if I can fix the fault without having to open the camera mechanism up to do so. So I'll start by removing the top cover. As you might be able to see there, I've induced the fault and you can see that the capping plate covers the top part of the shutter. This is somewhat more exaggerated than the problem I'm trying to repair from a distance. But that gives you an example of the sort of effect that we've got. And that if you press on that pressure plate, it lifts up but springs back down. It's under spring tension. And now I've got to see if I can fix it from the outside. So what I'm planning on using to sort out this problem is some paper. I've got a small piece of paper here, one of those notes. I've just folded it over twice. I folded over the edge of it there because I want to get this edge in under the back of the camera. And what I'm going to do is just pop it in the back there where the capping plate comes down. Crank the capping plate down. It didn't latch of course because it didn't come back far enough. Fire the shutter and check my result. As you can see, the capping plate no longer obstructs the back of the shutter and it latches down neatly. So that was the answer in this case. The capping plate hung down at the back inside the camera and was obstructing the view of the back of the shutter. And a piece of paper folded twice, folded the end over so I could hook it in at the back, crank the film advance, and that fixed the problem. And what was the problem, you might ask? Well, there's a little spring loaded finger on a shaft inside the camera that acts on the top of that capping plate to push it down and latch it into position. Now that spring was bent down too far. It wasn't bent down miles too far, but it was bent down too far. Now how did it come to be like that? Well I know I didn't do it, but that doesn't mean it wasn't like that previously. It didn't stop the camera from functioning correctly, but what it did do is it meant that when you looked in the back of the camera you couldn't see the full 
width of the shutter at the back there because the capping plate hung down slightly. And when you put your finger on the capping plate, you could push it up against that spring tension, but then it dropped back down again. So the answer was a piece of paper. And I'll deliver that answer to the person who has the camera on the other side of the world, and I expect that'll sort the problem out. And the poor old post office of the world, well, they're going to have to miss out on a $40 shipping fee both ways, but that's life.